In this video, we're going to be walking through one of the most important settings you need to know about for responsive design in bubble applications. If you're not paying attention to this setting, your page layouts won't adapt very well to different screen sizes, from mobile to tablet, all the way up to desktop. This is going to help ensure that your users have the best experience, the most convenient experience when interacting with your app. Okay, the setting that we're going to be looking at is your width setting. This is going to have one of the highest impacts on your app's responsive behavior. If you think about it, that's really what sets apart different devices is their width. So a mobile phone is the most narrow in its width. A tablet's a little bit wider, laptop wider still, desktop even wider. So if you're paying attention to this setting, you'll really be able to control uh, the user's experience on different devices. So in my sample application here, I have a really common design for for a multi-column form. So I have this outer container here, and then I've got a left side with inputs and a right side with inputs. So on a wider device, so a laptop, even a tablet and above, uh, I have plenty of room to see these two sides uh, next to each other. Um, there's plenty of room for the inputs in order for me to type in and comfortably read everything. But on a smaller device, I might not have the same amount of room. In fact, if I try to squish everything to still appear side by side, what's going to happen is that the inputs are going to get more narrow. Then it's going to become more cumbersome for the user to type things in. So what I want to happen is for the groups to collapse on top of each other. So instead of a left and a right side, we have a top and a bottom. I'm going to show you what I mean here. I'm going to go over to the responsive uh, preview simulator here in the editor. Uh, and I'm just going to change my different uh, breakpoints so you can see what this looks like. Right now, we're at a laptop, kind of a tablet level. And as I pull in the width, you know, simulating a more narrow device, you can see that the left and the right side eventually will stack on top of each other. Now, at this point, which is more of like a very large smartphone or really more of like a tablet size, um, now the, the inputs have more room to expand. They're actually wider than they were in the desktop view when the two sides of the form were side by side. You can control that. You don't necessarily have to have things expand wider than you really need, but the main thing here is that the groups are going to stack on top of each other. And as I get more narrow in my breakpoints, you know, we're still maintaining that column top and bottom stacking uh, and, and, and the user is still very comfortably able to work with this form. Now it's a much more mobile friendly design. Now I'm also going to go in the opposite direction here. You see that at some point there's plenty of room for them to show up next to each other and so it'll come back left and a right side uh, more of a row type of style. And as I continue to expand on the breakpoint, so I really wider here, notice that my form is not continuing to expand with me. There's a point where it stops because we also don't want to take it to the other extreme either, right? I don't want things to squish down too much. I also don't want to spread it out too much. It becomes cumbersome in that way as well. If I'm having to kind of really scan uh, a really large uh, uh, width of space there. Let's take a look at the editor here and see how these settings came together. So I'm going to open up the property editor for this outer container uh, that I've called group form. It's the one with the white background and actually holds the left and right inner groups. I'm going to go into the layout tab and we're going to scroll down about halfway where we can find our width settings. You'll also find your height settings too. Your height settings are also just as important, but the width is really the one that makes the biggest impact in terms of your responsive behavior. Because again, that's really what sets apart those devices. So you'll find um, that you can either make a, an elements width setting fixed, meaning it does not change. It doesn't matter what size the, the device is or what the window size is, it will not change. Um, or if you uncheck it, you can now have control over the minimum and the maximum. You'll see here on my group form, I have a minimum of 300 pixels, meaning Bubble is not going to continue to compress it um, if uh, until I get to 300 pixels, right? So if I go to, uh, let's go to 320, right? So I'm still within my minimum. And if I go even smaller than 320, you'll see here, uh, my page size right now is 217. You won't really find a device at that width uh, that's really, really narrow. But you'll notice that my group stopped compressing, right? Because I told Bubble it needs to be at least 300 pixels. And then we have the opposite uh, for the max width, right? So I just selected the 1200 pixel breakpoint, but my group is not expanding to the full 1200 pixels. It is stopping at 800. Now, if I change this width, to let's say a thousand, 
This is the max width setting. You're going to see it's going to expand a little bit more, right? I gave it a few more pixels, well, about 200 more pixels, uh, so that it can spread out a bit more. So this is where you can fine tune uh, and really perfect the, the behavior that you're looking for. The fit width to content setting is going to be dependent on the elements that are inside. So notice that when I check that box, the outer group actually compressed. It, it got more narrow because it didn't need more space in order to fit the inner blue and purple groups that we see here. So that's another variable that you can play around with as well. Now inside, let me uncheck this here, inside of the group form, I have my, my inner groups. So if I go to my group left here, this is my blue group, notice that I only have a minimum width and no max width. You can do that too. You don't have to define both ends of the, the range. Uh, keep in mind that these inner groups are inside of another container. So they, you know, to, to a certain extent, that parent container will also dictate how wide or narrow something gets. Because if, a, if the parent container is gonna have a max width, that's as wide as those, element, those inner elements are gonna be able to go. So I don't need to worry as much about setting a max here. That's personal preference, how I wanted to design this. Of course, if I wanted to be more specific at this elements level, then I can define a max width if I wanted. But here, I just wanna ensure that the left side and the right side have a certain width so that we can comfortably work with the inputs within them. And given that they are uh, part of the same form, I wanna keep their settings even. So both of them, left and right, are gonna have um, uh, a minimum width you see here of 275. That way I can have more predictability around how they'll both react, whether they're on the same row or if they're gonna be stacked on top of each other, top and bottom. So my recommendation is start at the outer containers, change the width settings and preview how that behaves across different breakpoints. If you need to make more specific adjustments with the inner elements, then you can work your way in. All right, I hope this was helpful. And if it was, definitely check out the content you see on the screen right now. These videos will help you better build and launch your app and a lot more quickly too.